That's it. We've done it. Science has taken us to the point that we need to be in this format. Gokies. Pff, fuck that shit. We have True Draco winning regionals. We have Sky Strikers being a former shell of themselves in today's current format. I haven't heard shit out of Trick Stars. We've got ABCs over here incorporating themselves into danger. Welcome to the regional block of 2018, where most Goki players are going X3 at events because their combos are being stopped because their opponent now has hand traps. We've done it. Science has gotten us to probably the best play in the format. And we all want a ban list, right? That's fine. Top cuts at YCS will remain the exact same X tier decks. But when you get into the regional season, the game has progressed to the point now that Rogue, that's right, Ritual Beast, in the year 2018, can top. Let that sink in for a moment. Okay, that was that was long enough. So, we have the 7th place regional deck profile um, from Houston, Texas. This was posted by Team Bortle, um, and I wanted to give them a little bit of recognition because I haven't seen this list come out. Um, I don't think a lot of people kind of took notice to this deck kind of coming out of left field. Um, and I think it deserves a lot of recognition because it is Ritual Beast, all right? We've got shit like fucking Morphtronics out here winning locals. We've got Valkyries in the year 2018. Have people just gotten so bored of the format that we're now playing fun decks? I don't, I don't discriminate against that. I think that's a really cool thing actually right now that players are so bored with the metagame that we're now playing roguish decks at events. I think that is probably one of the coolest things. So to see this deck come out of the woodwork once again, it's got to do with the floodgates. <sighs> yep. So True Draco's been piggybacking off of the success of the format as of late because of, well, you guessed it, floodgates. You have these renditional cards that stop the progress and evolution of the metagame, and that's honestly why Goes and Match, and even things like Dimensional Fissure, Macrocosmo start to see play. Um, I definitely think Macrocosmo is one of the most ridiculous cards in this format. You resolve either one of these two in the Goki matchup, you're going into a fan-fucking-tastic position. You take away Goki's Graveyard, you take away, if you have Macro Face Up, you shut off the additional dumping of spells into the graveyard for Sky Striker. Uh, depending on your Trickstar matchup, things might happen. Same thing with Altergeist. These cards, these two in particular, even though they're limited to one, if you see them enough, every dog is going to have his day. I think it's one of the cool things when I look at Ritual Beast as a deck. Because no matter what happens, if you draw your Floodgates, you draw these two cards in t combination throughout the course of one day and you resolve these cards enough, you are going to have a successful day. It's just an amount of probability and statistics until that moment happens. Now, we don't have Ash Blossoms in this list. You don't really take your poison with your hand traps. Um, I don't see any real reason to kind of change up a successful formula. Uh, so there's that. And then one more thing I do want to note. I'm starting to see a lot of decks going to Power Code Talker here. So for those of you that don't know, Power Code Talker, once per turn you target one face of monster on the field, negate that target's effects until the end of this turn. Then once per turn, if this card battles an opponent's monster during damage calculation, quick effect, you contribute one monster's card points to. This card's attack becomes double its original attack uh, during the damage calculation only. Um, I think we're starting to see this progressively start to see more play as not only a means to negate troublesome effects, uh, you now have a means to kind of close out games with a link 3 that goes to 4600 um, for no reason. And keep in mind, this is a quick effect. So if you battle an opponent's monster, you have your other guy attack a monster, have him attack a monster, you are still essentially getting double the value out of these cards. And I really like my multi-functioning cards. So for Power Code to start seeing play, um, he's not only the only one that's been doing this so far um, from the list I've been seeing, but yeah, Power Code's starting to gain a little bit more playability um, in the Rogue Department. So, onwards and upwards to the list, shall we? This is the seventh place Ritual Beast deck profile. So we have two effect trailers. Like I said, you pick your hand traps. Um, I honestly think that effect trailer might be a little bit better in this option, or in this deck, because if larger monsters kind of come out, 
Uh, honestly, you don't really care if your opponent searches. You kind of just want to stop their key effects and do what your deck does. It's just is bleh, and go. Three Ghost Ogres. I, I don't know how many people kind of underestimate Ogring the Firewall, but, I mean, it's it's pretty good. Um, Ritual Beast. We have three Tamer Elders. So after you Normal Summon this card, Normal Summon one Ritual Beast monster during your main phase this turn. In addition to your Normal Summoner set, you can only gain that effect once per turn. You can only use one Ritual Beast Tamer Elder or Elders once per turn. So additional Normal Summon granting. Yeah, you already know. Now, this build's playing three copies of Wen. Um, I think I've seen some builds cut her down. So if this card is normal summon, you target one of your banished Ritual Beast monsters. Special summon it. You can only special summon or one Ritual Beast Tamer when... Oh yeah, you can only special summon one when per turn. So keep in mind, uh, it is another additional normal summon. It is kind of a combo extender to kind of grant you these additional effects. So understand what you're getting yourself into when you play here. One copy of Apaleo. This is the one that banishes a Ritual Beast card from your graveyard for the rest of this turn. All Ritual Beast monsters you control gain that fresh 500 attack and defense. Um, so, I just honestly, he just makes things bigger. That's the that's my biggest thing about him. Like you, he's a one of that you have to play. It just loads up. Now, Kama Hawk. Keep in mind the TCG only has one of the best cards that we have, and this deck is seeing success. So Kind of Hawk, once you're in Banish, one Ritual Beast from your deck face up. During your second standby phase activ activation, you get the card back to your hand. It's a Gold Sarcophagus. Uh, nothing really too much else to say about this, honestly. Uh, Rem Rem. So Rem Pengu, once you're in Banish, one Ritual Beast monster from your extra deck and send one Ritual Beast monster, same type as that monster from your deck to the graveyard. Of course, you can only use one Rampangu for turn. So you banish eh, whatever the hell you don't need in here. Go ahead and load up more Ritual Beasts into your graveyard. Kind of just meets the conditions for a lot more of your generalized effects that you're going to need. And then we have, honestly, the best card in the deck, which is three Spiritual Beast Tamer Window. This card in its owner's position is destroyed by opponents, card by battle or card effect. Special number one Ritual Beast monster from your deck or extra deck, ignoring those fat summoning conditions. Hmm. Sometimes I should have Alti Gaia Apelios too. Yup. <laughs> Fun facts. So we've also got one Dimensional Fissure, one E Telly, two Forbidden Chalice, one Monster Reborn, and three Scapegoat. This particular build does focus more on the extra linking aspect or access to it because you are playing Scapegoat. Uh, I can't tell you how many times people love Saruja just coming out of Scapegoat. Now he's not playing Saruja. I think he's going for more of like the value out of this, like, setting up Link Kribos, setting up Decode Talker for OTKs and protection. So what he's doing with Scapegoat is a little bit more defensive than I think most builds would be trying to do. Now Traps, we have Triple Goes in Match, one Macro Cosmo, one Ambush, Triple Steeds, Triple Torrential Tribute. This is honestly what I would expect from the Trap Board for this deck. Um, my biggest concern with this is there isn't a concern. Uh, three Torrential Tribute is great. Three Goes and Match is great for controlling the field. You've literally got everything that you need in one household um, to just take care of those pesky matchups. So I do appreciate the trap lineup for this. I think we started to see more of a stabilized trap lineup. And he is playing Forbidden Chalice. I don't know how many artifacts he might have run into, but honestly, having this as a means to shut off Scythe, yeah, it's pretty good. Then we have the extra deck. We have two Ultim Kuma Falcos, one Proxy Dragon, one Power Code Talker, two Link Kribo, one Nightmare Phoenix, one Gaia Saber, one Decode Talker, one Ulti Petalfin, two Ulti Gaia Apelio, one Kanahawk, and two Ulti Apelio. And then the side deck here we have two Skullmeister, triple Sphere Mode, two Dragon, one Dark Hole, one Rageki, triple Heavy Storm Duster, and triple red reboot. Now, like I said, it has been a long time coming since we have seen Ritual Beast do anything in the current game of Yu-Gi-Oh! I, I want to continue to see this deck grow. I want to continue to see this deck have interactions just with the game in general as we evolve and go further down the pipeline in the future. Just because the deck might not be seeing success today doesn't mean tomorrow or the next day doesn't mean that the deck can't return to the competitive scene and we will see some crazy shit like this again so thank you mr 
Team Bortle for getting this information out for us. Um, guys, please check out the deck profile down below. And guys, that is all I have for this deck profile. If you're a big Ritual Beast fan, please tell me in the comments section. I'd love to hear how many of you there actually are out there. Alright guys, I'm out. Peace. Duelist. The ride never ends, guys. Make sure you enable those notifications to get the latest videos that are being posted on this channel. Make sure you guys check out Van Cole 40 for my Cardfight Vanguard channel. And join me and House of Champions on the Zodiac Duelist TV Twitch stream. I will be interacting with our audiences. And please check out No Limit Gaming and LGTCG.com for the cheapest trading cards on the market. Thanks for watching, guys, and please have a good day.